Okay, let's talk about camera accessories. A few of you have been sending me questions asking about what I use. So this is the bag that I, I take. So let's go over everything here. So the bag that I use is the GoPro Whistler 450 AW. I've done a video on this already. So I'll link that down below. But things I like about it is it's back loading and you can get quite a bit into it. And you can also put things on the side. So first accessory is a tripod. I've got the Manfrotto 055X Prob. That might not be the right way to say it. And it's got a pan and tilt head on it, which has been quite good. It's a bit annoying with heavy things, like the uh, wildlife lens, but you get used to it. It's a little bit on the heavy side, but I've got used to that and I actually quite like it now. It is annoying when you first get it and you've got to carry it. That's one thing to think about when you're buying this stuff, is that you, you've got to carry it up a hill. That definitely gets annoying. But it comes up above eye level for me, which is really useful and it goes down really low. So it covers pretty much everything I'd want it to. I've covered it with some um, camouflage material. You don't have to do that for landscapes. It just helps a little bit with the wildlife stuff. And then on the other side, again, it's not essential, but this is just a bit of um, waterproof material sewn onto some camouflage material. I just use it to sit on at dinner time and when I'm waiting for the light to change. So let's go through the bag. So the first thing we're going to go over is the um, filters. I've bought into the Lee system and it is a bit of an investment. I kind of wish I got into it earlier because you can adapt the filters to any lens using these little rings rather than having to buy a, a filter for each lens, which is possibly the more expensive way to do it. But when you're starting out, you're not too sure of what you're going to need, so it, it is hard to choose. But the way it works is that screws onto the lens and then this bit, it's got um, little grooves so you can get two filters in there. So that would be the lens bit and it just clips on, on like that and then you can spin it around. So if you're using the ND grad filters, which is like this one here, well, this is a ND grad filter and it's dark at the top, then it graduates down to clear. This is a two stop soft, so it's like two stops darker at the top and it's a soft because it, the graduation is soft. You do also get hard ones, um, which is just a straight line. These are good for if you're shooting like a mountain range where the horizon is up and down and it's not like a defined straight edge. Whereas the, the hard ones are good for seascapes. Got some visitors. Um, so yeah, soft are good for mountain ranges, hards are good for seascapes. That's without the filter. And then that's with, you can slide it up and down to affect it. Um, probably somewhere around there. If you like doing long exposures, so where uh, the clouds are all smoothed out or the water's smoothed out. You're going to want to look at ND filters. It's like a solid piece of darkened glass. This is a two stop. Uh, this is a six stop. This is the little stopper. So you can compare the two there. That's six and that's two. Can you see the difference? Can you see the difference? Can I 
this way. So the way they work is you put that into the holder or you hold it on front of the lens and it just means that you can use a longer shutter speed and you don't have to make the aperture too small so you could use a f8 and get a, like a five second shutter speed rather than going down to f22 and then risk getting um, diffraction another good lens for the landscape shots is the polarizer i use these circular ones and the way they work is you've got to be at a 90 degree angle to the sun and as you spin it that's what changes the effect so if you're looking down at some water um, you can get rid of the glare and it also gets rid of reflections which can be bad but go away so if you watch the water here say how it's really bright just behind the tree like here as you twist it the water is going to get darker and around there and it just helps make it all stand out I probably use this lens the most it definitely helps out a lot when you're down by a lakeside or um, if you're at a pier and it's reflecting on the pier then it does get rid of it so if I was going to buy one thing it will probably be that the one thing you have to be careful of though is you need to get the right thread size the one thing you have to be careful of though is you have to get the right thread size for your lens and you can probably find that on the back of the lens cap it's a number that's on here so whatever that number is that's the size lens that you need you're getting in the way now and then another thing that you're going to need is cleaning equipment so this is an air blower you just squeeze that and it it's good for blowing off big chunks that are on the glass so if you're down at the beach and you get sand on the lens so you take the big chunks off with that and if you've got a bit of moisture on the lens so it's been raining or mainly rain or mud you just wipe it off with this so it might be worth getting a few different ones of those because once they get wet you're just rubbing more wet stuff onto the lens so it doesn't really help and then i've also got a little pouch of other little accessories so i've got batteries so there's camera batteries and there's batteries for the microphone I have found that with the batteries if you're out in the cold it is better to keep them in your pocket because it's warmer there if they're in your bag they'll get cold and they just don't last as long probably last about half as half as long as usual so it's important to have a few spare of those because you always run out at the wrong time I've also got little screws which they're from the tripod I've never actually needed them yet, but I imagine it would be really annoying if those screws came out and you're waiting for a shot. So it's just nice to know it's there really. And then I've also got little accessories for if the tripod breaks. So there's an Allen key, there's a spare little um, clip that keeps the legs open. I've got an extra quick release plate for the tripod if you are looking into getting into the long exposure photography you're probably going to want to invest into a trigger release what you do is you plug this bit into the side of the camera and you just press this button to trigger it and if you're in bulb uh, which is like anything more than 30 seconds you can hold it down and lock it into place and the fancier ones you can dial in the time that you want it to be open for so you could say 45 seconds two minutes 10 minutes whatever i don't really go past 30 seconds though so i haven't bothered buying one of those yet another little thing that i like is i take these inner gloves you're supposed to wear these under like a thick pair of gloves but i find these are quite good for keeping away that one's knackered actually. 
I find these are quite good for just keeping the wind off and you can still use your fingers. My ones are all quite knackered. It's like, they're the things I use the most. But, you can still control all the settings on the camera, all at the touch of your finger, rather than having to take your gloves off altogether and then just getting cold fingers. So, I take a few pairs of them because as you climb up the rocks, they'll probably get wet. Other things to think about is, well, it doesn't really help with the photography, but if you're going up onto the fells, you're gonna need to take a map with you for the right area. Um, you can get the GPS, but I don't trust stuff with a battery. That's not gonna run out of battery, so it's always gonna work. It just takes a bit of practice to learn how to use it. And you're also gonna need a compass I find these are good for obviously the navigation, but also if you're at a location and you want to work out where the sunrise and sunset's going to be. So say, say I like this spot here. I know that north is that way, and because the sunrise in the east and sets in the west, um, the sunrise is going to be over there, and the sunset's going to be over there. So you can help plan your locations, like when you're scouting trips out. If you are going up onto the fells, you're going to need to be prepared because it is kind of cold up there some of the time. So I've got this little windproof. I like this one because it's really small. That one just fits in your hand. And I've also got this one. This is more of a rainproof, but again, it's really small. It's a bit bigger than the the windproof but that's not bad space is quite important when you plan on these trips because you don't have that much of it really and I also normally take a few extra thicker layers because these aren't warm but um, keeping the water out and the wind out really help with staying warm I think that covers everything that I, I use there's a lot of snake oil products when you start looking that you don't need I tend to take things because it's either practical, oh, hang on, there is one more thing. There's also this um, rain cover for the camera. The lens sticks out that side and the back of the camera is there so you can, um, you can still operate everything but the camera doesn't risk getting wet. If I wasn't photographing events and um, places where people have hired me and I'm, I'd rather look professional. I, I used to just use um, shower caps or a plastic bag and that worked just the same way. That just looks a bit smarter. So I think that covers everything. I've done a blog post over on adamkappa.co.uk as well. So I've done a write-up with links to everything over there. Um, I wasn't planning on there being swans when I started this. So I'm not sure if I've missed anything. But I think that covers everything. Um, if you like the video please hit the like button and subscribe if you want to help support the channel as well i've got prints and greetings cards over at adamkappa.co.uk and yeah i'll see you next time